Imagine that you work in the admissions office at Harvard and we receive two application packages. But as soon as you open both, you discover that they have the same grades. The only thing that can differentiate those candidates is both their experiences and their life story. Both of those things are found in the personal statement. So how do you write this extremely important part of information that goes in the application process in order for you to stand out and get picked by the lady that is there sitting on the admissions office? In this video I'm going to show you the simple system that got me from a Brazilian public school to Science for Paris. I'm also going to show you how it actually works and how anyone can easily apply it. I actually use the system that I'm about to tell you to get my first internship with a French influencer. Then another internship when I was living in Sydney in Australia and finally my first real work experience in Melbourne, also in Australia. So not only you can use this strategy for any type of selective process, you can also use it in international waters. It really works, doesn't matter the country. But let's jump into it! When I was drafting my first personal statement ever, I was taking so much care to put every single experience I had in the letter and also meticulously showing how my skills and capabilities would benefit that institution. But then I decided, like I always tell you guys to do, to give the letter that I wrote to somebody in that institution to correct for me. So I was lucky enough that I knew somebody who knew somebody that was already inside Sciences Po Paris. And she told me something that I was not expecting, but it's actually essential for you to write a good personal statement. Each paragraph should be different, not because you're telling new things about your life, but because you're showing them how you came across the choice to apply to that institution, as well as why you're a great fit to go there. That's when I realized that before you put one word on paper, you should know that each paragraph has a different purpose. And you should always have this structure that I'm about to tell you in mind before you write a personal statement. You should always address who you are, why you got interested in that institution, why they should be interested in you, and why are they essential for your future. And now you must be wondering, does it actually work? Well, all of this is useless if you don't know the next step, so let's just jump into it. During my gap year, I decided that I wanted to have some professional experience to see how it was like to actually be independent and have a career. Of course, now I'm going back to Paris to do my master's and I'll be back to being a full-time student. But while I was working, I learned one conceptual framework that really blew my mind. I have introduced that into my personal statement writing strategy ever since. Quickly, just before I jump in, a conceptual framework is a way of organizing your thinking. So here's what happened. In the company that I was working in, we had a culture of having catch-ups with everyone. But what was special about this company is that even the founder had catch-ups with everyone, including me, that was in a graduate position. At the time we had a catch-up, she already knew that I was going to my master's at Sciences Po again, but we started talking about a framework that allows you to showcase your value to other people. She told me, Isabella, when you're applying for a job, you should make sure that you align your already acquired skills with the ones they would look for in a candidate, as well as show them that they are the best path for you to either learn something new or increase the depth of the knowledge you already have. But since I told you I was going to teach you how to do this in practice, here's what you need to do every time you're gonna write a paragraph for your personal statement. Basically, you should match your experiences with what they would want or expect from a candidate, as well as include them as essential for your trajectory of growth. Take a blank piece of paper and separate it in four columns. In each column, you're gonna put the skills you already have, and anecdotes that explain how you got them, and the skills you want to acquire. And the fourth and most important part I'll show you as soon as I finish showing this example from my own personal statement that I wrote for Sciences Po Paris. Feel free to pause this video if you want to read the rest, but there is something in this paragraph that I really want you guys to pay attention to. Let me explain. I made only one mistake in this paragraph, and it's the fact that I used only two elements of the framework I gave you just then. But that's because the next paragraph was a smaller one that addressed the third one, and the fourth mysterious one, which is basically you should show that you can only get the skills and knowledge you're looking for through that specific institution's academic program. But here's what I would write instead now that I have the knowledge that I compiled in this video. 
Now I dare you to pause this video and identify which color represents which step of the framework and the exercise we were doing just then. Using the framework that I just presented you with the four steps, I wrote this paragraph in less than two minutes. But of course, this will only work if you know how to talk about a story in a compelling and digestible way, which leads us into step three and four. I've actually announced on my Instagram before that I was going to correct some of your guys' essays before you sent them to the institution. And here's my Instagram if you guys want to check that out. And this is the most common mistake that's probably hindering their chances of getting into the uni or job of their dream. A lot of the times I would sit down to correct their essays, but I couldn't quite grasp what message they were trying to transmit. There are two things that will hinder your chances of saying a lot without actually saying anything. The first thing you should do is write each phrase of your paragraph in bullet points. This will help you portray the information in a more organized and clear way, which will help with clarity in general. But tip number two is actually even better. A lot of the times when I was correcting your essays, everyone was kind of vague when talking about their experiences. So here's what you need to do to avoid being vague. When talking about one specific extracurricular activity, you need to always think about the why, the what, the how, the who, and the when. If you have all of these five things when you're talking about a specific activity, then they will know that it actually happened, they will have all of the information, and you want to really name it. Use the name of the program, the name of the institution, tell them what you did, what, how it happened. <laughs> hours later. Use the name of the program, the name of the institution, tell them when you did it, how you did it, what happened in there, just give them all the details. What sounds better? I was chosen to be captain of my volleyball team which taught me teamwork. Or in 2020 I decided I wanted to build up my teamwork skills, so I signed up for the Let Her Play volleyball tournament in my state. We had nowhere to play because our high school didn't have a court so I offered my buildings one. Since I was committed to the success of the team, I was chosen to be team captain. You guys already know which one is better, so just keep in mind that showcasing them the why, the what, the who, the how, and the when will make them understand your story, see what happened concretely, and actually relate with the things that you say, instead of being like, okay, but what happened? Um, where did she do it? How did she actually learn this? And having those questions in their heads will make them question you as a candidate. So every time you're explaining something, you have to pay it off. Because if you say you learned something, the first thing they'll be asking themselves is, how did she learn this? Where did she learn this? Okay, but what I'm about to tell you right now is something that most people miss. 99%, so if you're still here, you're getting that personal statement good to the dot and you're better than 99% of the candidates out there. As you guys already know, I'm Brazilian, but I speak English very well. So when I was 14 years old, I actually went for an exchange in the US for three months in which I stayed in my uncle's house in North Carolina. Something really unexpected happened when I got there, which is I signed up for a drama class in which I had to perform the character of Trincolo in a Shakespeare play called The Tempest. But what actually happened is that as soon as I got the text that I needed to memorize, I started reading everything trying to decipher what Shakespeare actually was trying to say. So on the first read, I couldn't even understand the plot of the story because I was so distracted with the words. Your goal when writing a personal statement is trying to portray who you are, why you like that institution and what is their importance in your future. You do not want to be poetic or use big words when you're writing because that's just gonna get in the way of the message you're trying to transmit. Really don't want you to be stuffing everything with pretty words because if the points you're trying to make are crap, the pretty words are not gonna help you. A good explanation is one that's easily understandable and easy to read. If your essay is clunky, I 100% guarantee you that they will be more confused than interested. 
Okay, so now you have your personal statement and you think you don't need anything else to make you stand out from the crowd. Very sorry to break it to you, but another really important part of the application process is actually social proof. One way of getting social proof that you're a good student is through your grades, but as we learned in this video, your grades are not actually that big of a differentiator. It doesn't really matter if you wrote a killer personal statement, if your teacher who wrote your reference letter doesn't really think you're that good of a student. So if you actually want to stand out you need a killer reference from your teachers but don't fret here's where i teach you how to do it thanks for watching guys see you next week